All right, hello everyone. This is a video lesson for Unit 6, Discovery and Invention. And let's start. All right, so I'm just going to go through some of the book pages. And let's start with the vocabulary for listening one. Here it is. Okay, so it's page 128. And the way that this works best is if you try to use it interactively. So pause the video, try to do the questions in your book, and then restart the video when you are ready for the answers. Okay. So I'm going to just go through these questions now. So number one, Al Jazari designed machines to help with farming. He made drawings and gave detailed descriptions of how to build these machines. So the correct answer is designed. So design in the past tense. Number two, Scientific research has proven that genes can affect our health. Number three, scientists hope to someday discover a cure for cancer. Number four, the Chinese invented gunpowder and used it for fireworks. Okay, so invent in the past tense, invented. Uh, number five, a baby monitor is a device which lets parents watch their baby when they are in a different room. Number six, it can often take many years to develop a new drug. Number seven, this diagram isn't very clear. I can't figure out how to put this together. And number eight, modern technology such as computers and mobile phones has changed our lives. Okay, so that's the vocabulary related to listening one. Now, I'm not going to play the listening one audio. So we're going to skip the next uh, three pages, but we will have a look at the language development on page 132. Okay, so you can see there, language development, uses of the verb make. As it shows us on screen, the verb make has three main meanings, force, cause, or produce. So an example of a force, my boss made me work late last night. Okay, so that is being forced, forced upon the person. An example of a cause, water and weights make the mechanical clocks work. And then an example of produce, the first fountain pen was made in 953. That is an example of produce. All right, so on the next page, 133, we're going to find some questions. So again, if you want to get the best out of this, you should pause the video, try to do the answers in your book. And then when you're ready, start the video again, and you can check the answers as I give them. Okay, so part one, look at the sentences. Uh, what is the meaning of make in each sentence? C for clock for cause, F for force, P for produce. Gunpowder was first made in China. That's an example of produce. So number two, my professor made me rewrite my assignment because there were too many mistakes. Okay, somebody is making you do something that is F force. 
Number three, social media makes it easy for people to stay in touch. So that is, that is a force. Sorry, no, 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 that's not force, that is a cause. Social media makes it easy for people to stay in touch. Right, social media causes it to become easier. So number three is cause. Number four, today, most pens are made of plastic. P, produce. Number five, the new discovery made a lot of people very happy. Cause. And I made myself stay up late to finish the work. Force. Okay, so the correct answers are P, F, C, P, C, F. Let's have a look at part two. Circle the best definition for each phrase in bold. So this is more vocabulary. Uh, if you make a comparison between these two TVs, you'll see that this one has a much clearer picture. So make a comparison that is gonna be B to consider the similarities between two things. Number two, I like both of these phones a lot. It's hard to make a decision about which one to buy. That is to choose A. Number three, inventions and machines designed by medieval scholars made a great contribution to society. And that would be B, to help to make something successful. Number four, the invention of the light bulb made a huge difference in people's lifestyles. After it was invented, life was never the same. Okay, so that is a B to improve something. Number five, for over a century, inventors have been making attempts to create a car which can fly, but they haven't been, but they haven't succeeded. They haven't succeeded. Making attempts is to try, A. Number six, about 10 years ago, Andrew made a small investment in a tech startup company. Now he's a millionaire. So that is B, to put money into something to make a profit. Number seven, this is a good smartphone, but they could still make improvements for, to it. For example, I wish it had longer battery. Make improvements, that would be A, to make something better. And number eight, the company announced it is going to be taken over, but the identity of the buyer won't be made public until later this month. And that is A, to share information about something. Okay, let's keep going. And the next page, on page 134, now we have something a little bit more grammatical, and this is called passive verb forms. Passive verb forms. So we have active verbs, active sentences, and passive sentences, passive verbs. Okay, so let's just read the top part there. In an active sentence, we focus on who or what did something. In a passive sentence, the focus is on what happened. Okay, so the first one is focusing on who or what, and the passive is focusing on the action, on what happened. So you can see the example, the active sentence, Alan Turing invented the digital computer. The focus in that sentence is on Alan Turing. But in the passive one, we're gonna focus on the action of inventing. And it goes like this, the digital computer was invented in 1936. If you wanna make it plural, that is more than one, the next example, digital computers were invented in 1936. Okay, so the key with these sentences is deciding, is it in the past or is it in the present? And is it a single or is it a plural? Okay, so if it's a single in the present, you're gonna say is, 
If it's a plural in the present, you're going to use are. And likewise, if it's in the past, we use was or were. Now, we often use dates. In that case, we're going to use in, in 1936. But you can also use by to tell us about who or what did it. So look at the very fast, uh, sorry, the very last sentence there. The digital computer was invented in 1936 by Alan Turing. So you can include that information in a passive sentence, but it usually goes at the end. All right, so I would suggest that you pause this video and have a go at doing part four. And you're also going to have a go at doing the next page, part five and part six. Okay, so it's part four, part five, and part six. Stop the video, try to answer the questions in your book, and when you are ready, start the video again and listen to the answers. Right, part four. So their example is, Apple's first tablet computer was developed in the 1990s. So we're just adding the, uh, the prepositions. Let's have a look at number two. So I'll just give you the correct answers. The law of gravity was discovered by Isaac Newton in the 17th century. Number three, the first computer chip was invented in the 1950s. Number four, the first smartphone was created after 1997. And number five, penicillin was first discovered in 1928 by Alexander Fleming. Next page, part five. Complete the sentences using the correct form of the verbs in brackets. Use active or passive. All right, so number one. Paper was discovered in ancient China. Number two, the telephone was invented in 1876. Now, number three is an active sentence. And the, the way you know it is because the person's name is at the beginning. So Imhotep, an Egyptian architect, designed. We don't need was or were or is or are. We're just using the verb in the past tense. Imhotep, an Egyptian architect, designed the pyramid of uh, Djoser. Number four, glasses were developed to help people with bad vision to read. This letter was written with a fountain pen. A very early calculator was created by Blaise Pascal. Number seven is an active sentence because it begins with people, it begins with who. Millions of people download smartphone apps every day. You can do that in the present. You don't have to change it to the past. Number eight, the pictures were sent by email. Uh, the first photograph was taken around 1826. Edison developed his first light bulb in 1879. Okay, part six, correct the verb errors in the sentences. Tip, one sentence does not have an error. 
All right, here we go. So five of them I have a, I have a mistake. One of them does not. The first one, the first smartphone, Simon, were created, it should be was, was created by IBM. DNA is discovered. No, DNA was discovered. Number three, the first newspaper was print, printed, should be past tense. Number four, the first computer program was wrote, that should be was written. Number five, hearing aids were developed to help people hear better. Number five is okay, no problem. And number six, Margaret Knight was invented, the paper bag in 1878. No, Margaret Knight invented, active sentence. So get rid of was. Okay, so now we're going to go to listening to, and this is the audio file that we will listen to in this video. But first, we'll just start with the vocabulary. Okay, so it's on page 136. You're going to listen to a lecture about the history of smartphone apps, applications, apps. But first, let's do the vocabulary. <coughs> so sentence one. I need a password to access the Wi-Fi connection in this cafe. Number two, once you download the app, you have to install it on your smartphone. Number three, this software lets you create your own apps. I have some great ideas I'd like to try. Number four, in a recent study, 45% of American smartphone users said they would rather give up their holidays than their phone. I always read product reviews before I buy an expensive item. IT is an extremely fast growing industry. Smartphones allow us to stay in touch with each other constantly. A lot of you did uh, speaking tasks about smartphones. Well, this listening is about smartphone applications. So it's slightly different. All right, so the next page then. All right, so it says, while listening, listen to an introduction to a lecture and number the topics in the order that they will be discussed. All right, so A, the influence of apps on our lives. B, specific examples of popular apps and see the history of apps. All right, so I'm gonna stop that share so that I can play the audio Here we go, 6.4. 6 Part one. Good morning. In today's lecture, I want to discuss an invention which has changed our lives. This product has made a huge difference in the way we work, travel, communicate and socialise with friends. Can you guess what it is? I'm talking here about mobile phone apps. The word app comes from application. Traditionally, 
applications were used in computers to help them perform better. However, with the invention of smartphones, the word app is used to refer to phone applications. In this lecture, we'll start by discussing the very first apps and their development. We will then discuss how apps have changed our lives. Finally, we'll focus on some of the most popular apps used by people today. OK, so the answer was at the end. If you didn't catch it, you can just rewind this video. I don't need to play it again. And when you're ready, you can check the answer. And I'll start using a Word file now. So page 137. Got one. And the answers are, or well, the correct order is C, A, B. So she's, she's going to start with the history of apps. And then she's going to talk about the influence of applications on our lives. And finally, she will give us specific examples of popular applications. All right. So what we'll do next is we will listen to the lecture. And as you can see in your book, part six, um, you're going to, let me share the photo again. So you're going to fill in the details which are missing. And you can see they are numbered there. So there's numbers one to 11. Part, or sorry, number seven and number eight, obviously there's a bigger gap. So you have to write slightly more information there. Um, but everything else is a very clear answer. All right, so this is listening practice. Again, if you want to use this video effectively, you should listen to the audio one or two times and try to write the answers and then I'll go through the answers after we hear the audio. Okay, so here we go, 6.5. 6 Part 2. I'd like to start by talking a little about the first apps. These were included with each smartphone. These types of apps were placed in the phones to help users access the internet, check emails, send texts and so on. The first apps were designed to increase efficiency at work and allow people to access important information. However, it was the second generation of apps that really changed things. These were downloadable apps. Users simply downloaded apps from the internet and installed them on their phones. Since its introduction, the app market has grown far beyond anyone's expectations. The first app store was opened in 2008. By 2011, it was reporting over 10 billion downloads and people were using apps more than internet browsers on their phones. And by 2017, an estimated 180 billion apps had been downloaded. These numbers have been growing ever since, and they give us a good idea about how popular apps are and how quickly they've developed. People from all over the world use apps for entertainment, travel and communication. So I'm going to briefly talk about how these apps have changed our lives. It's hard to imagine life before smartphones and mobile phone apps, or for those of us who are old enough to remember it. 
but let's go ahead and make an attempt anyway. So imagine for a moment that you're taking a road trip in the days before smartphones. Weeks before the trip, you go to the bookstore or library to get some guidebooks about the places you're going to visit. A few days before you leave, you get some audio books to entertain you during the long trip. You go to a shop and buy some maps. Yes, the paper kind. The day before the trip, you sit down at your computer and look up the directions and print them out. Then you pack some of your favourite CDs to bring along. You also pack your camera and your torch in case your car breaks down. And you write down some phone numbers and addresses of the friends you'll be visiting and the hotels where you'll be staying. While you're driving, your passenger reads the directions to you and looks for street signs. If you get lost, you stop at a petrol station to ask for directions. You have to write them down on a piece of paper. OK, so I think you get the idea. Now let's make a comparison with the same trip today. No books, no maps, no CDs, no lists of phone numbers, no friend giving you directions. The smartphone does it all. Think of the apps you'd use just for that one trip. You'd read reviews and book your hotel with a travel app. The GPS would replace the directions and maps and your friend in the front seat. Of course, a music app would replace the CDs and you could listen to podcasts as well as audiobooks. And, of course, you wouldn't need to bring a camera or a torch. Yes, we've certainly made a lot of progress since the pre-smartphone days. So now I'd like to mention another important effect of the invention of apps. It has created a whole new IT sector. It is one of the fastest growing industries and there is a great need for skilled software engineers. But apps have also had some negative effects. For one thing, people have become more helpless because they're so dependent on their phones for information. For example, if they're in a place with no phone signal, they're not very good at asking for and following directions. And apps have made people less patient because they expect to have information immediately. In fact, a recent study found that 50% of smartphone users leave a web page if it doesn't load in 10 seconds. OK, in the next part of the lecture, I'll discuss some of the most common apps in more detail. OK, so if you need to listen to the audio again, you can just rewind this video and listen to it as many times as you need to. And what I'm going to do now is obviously just go through the answers to part six. That was actually part three, wasn't it, above us there? <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So I'll just start writing the answers here on the Word file. So number one, the first applications, what were they used for? Accessing the internet. Uh, number two is check emails. And number three is send texts. If you want to be super detailed, she said, and so on. Send texts and so on. All right, next, she talks about the second generation of applications. Uh, number four, the first app store.
first app store opened in 2008. 2011, or by 2011, there were 10 billion downloads. People used apps more than, number five, internet browsers. And by 2017, 180 million downloads. Okay, now the next part, seven and eight, she gives us a quite detailed example of how applications affect our lives. And she uses the example of a road trip, taking a trip in the car, the road trip before smartphones and the road trip after. All right, so you don't need to write everything, but number seven, these are some of the things that she mentioned. So before we had smartphones, what did we have to do? We had to get guidebooks and audiobooks. We would go to the shop and buy maps. We would look up directions and print them out. We would pack a camera and a torch. A torch is British English, British English. Americans say flashlight. So it's like the little light that people use. Um, write down phone numbers. And if you get lost, you stop at a petrol station. And ask for directions. All right, so number eight, the road trip after smartphones. Now we can kind of summarize this quite easily. The smartphone replaces all of that and applications. Replace all of the above. Okay, so a travel app, GPS for the directions, music app, which will also give you your podcasts and audiobooks. No camera is needed, no torch is needed. Basically, everything is on the smartphone. Okay, let's just finish it off. Number nine, uh, another effect of apps. There is a need for skilled software engineers. Number 10. The negative effects of apps, people are more helpless. That means they're not very good at helping themselves. Number 11, people are less patient. I think we can all agree that this information is true. Okay, so there we go. That's the uh, that's the listening for unit six. And finally, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce and explain the assignment that I would like you to do.
for this unit. So we're going to use the page, this one, 139. It says, summarizing information using WH questions. So why, where, when, what, who, and how. Have a look at those four questions in part one. Number one says, when was the last time you used this thing? Number two says, what are its uses? Number three says, what would life be like without it? And number four, how has it affected our lives? All right, so I would like us, or I'd like you, to use those questions for the assignment. And this is also going to be my way of seeing who actually watches and studies with this video. All right, so this is the assignment for unit six, directions. Choose an item in your home. Now, there is one rule. You cannot choose smartphone because too many people already talked about it. You cannot choose smartphone. Okay, you need to choose a different item in your home. So just look around your home and select anything in your house. And then I want you to answer those four questions from page 139. Okay, so the first question, when was the last time you used this thing? Now at the top, you should obviously tell me what it is. So what is the item, item name? And then you're going to tell me when was the last time you used it? Okay, you just write your answer underneath. Question two, what are its uses? So what do people use it for? You have to write more than one thing. It should be probably at least two things or at least two sentences anyway. Number three says, what would life be like without it? And number four, how has it affected our lives? Okay, everybody. So this is the assignment for unit six. Choose an item from your home, anything. Write the name of it at the top of the file. And then answer the four questions using, you know, full sentences. <laughs> 